Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plot Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. Biting into a juicy fruit from your orchard is a great reward for a gardener, but often fruits have problems. Today we are answering viewer questions about tree fruits. It's a fruity Q&A show. Just ahead on the Family Plot Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to the Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Over the past year or so, we have received many viewer questions about tree fruits. We have not had a chance to show you all of them. Since it's winter and there's not much to do in the garden right now, we thought we'd spend some time catching up. Hopefully some of these answers will help you with your fruit next year. Let's start with a question about peaches. What would you do with a peach tree with gamosis? And this is Mary from Crossville, Tennessee. So Les, so mm -hmm. what would you do with peach trees that have gamosis? Well, I would encourage her to go out there and look at the trunk of the tree mm -hmm. and let's verify what exactly is happening. Gamosis mm -hmm. is, is a, a real thing that could happen <laughs> on its own, right? Right. Um, but it sounds more likely that she might be having an issue with, with borers. And when, when they bore, then sometimes we will have oozing of, you know, that gummy substance. And so it can look like gamosis, um, but maybe the actual, maybe that's a secondary, maybe. right, issue. And maybe the root cause is, is peach tree borers. Because it's peach trees, right? Right, it's peach so, trees. there you right. go. Could yeah, be, yeah could. I think that would be a very likely cause. And um, I get this call you know, all the time in the mm -hmm. spring when, when trees start coming out of dormancy and their juices start to flow and people want to know what is all of this stuff mm -hmm. coming out of my plants. Um, it can be kind of a, a horror movie looking, you know, kind of scenario. But definitely go out there and look because, you know, treatment for those is going to be different. If it's borers, then we need to look at what we can do to control, to control the borers. Um, if it's gamosis, then there's really not a lot that we can do. Generally, that was caused, you know, from damage maybe that happened to the trunk. Mm -hmm. It could be through a number of different types of stresses, environmental, you know, freezing, thaw cracks, or mechanical injury yeah. to the tree, or different things like this. Um, and and then when that injury happens, then that gamosis starts to flow out, and there's just nothing you can really do to rectify that. Type of situation. You're right. You know, outside of trying to prune, you know, possibly, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, and I mean, yeah. sometimes it's yeah, it's one of those things that could it's be tough. insect, it could be physiological. Yeah. There could even be some diseases. Mm -hmm. There could even be some canker. So yeah, close mm -hmm. inspection, good pictures, and then direct from there. Mm -hmm. And I see it actually. I mean, I see it most often on the trunks of trees. Uh, and I mean, yeah. at that point, like, can't prune your trunk. You off. can't prune your right. trunk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can do a prune, but it'd be. <laughs> Right, right. One cut. It'd be one cut. Yeah. One, one cut. But yeah, if it's in uh, you know upper you know uh, limbs, branches, and things like that, I mean pruning. Well, in that whole family, it's a oh yes, you it's know the, it's a challenge. It's the yeah. Family. family, yeah, 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 for sure. So it's gonna be uh, they're gonna have issues anyway, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, get out, Miss Mary, and inspect. All right. Hope that helps look, you yeah, out. Yeah, look for little holes. Yeah, look in for the, the little trunk. holes. Yeah, yeah, you'll see it. I am helping my neighbor. Her peach tree has peach leaf curl. The tree already has fruit about the size of my little fingertip. I have researched the disease. However, everything I found is for preventive care, fungicides twice a year. The products I have found warn against using them once the tree blossoms. What can I use to get rid of peach leaf curl? And this is Charlie from San Jose, California. All right, so that was a little research. You know, yep. that went to that. So we know it's peach leaf curl. Yeah. And, and but they, how do we get rid of it? And she told us the answer. Yeah. 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 How about that? Or Charlie. Uh, Charlie, 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 he told us the uh -huh. answer. Uh, once you've got a disease, unfortunately, uh, most of the time you, you can't get rid of it. The only thing you that you that. can yeah. hope to do yeah. is prevent it from spreading. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. And uh, you can, you can prune, do some pruning, mm -hmm. summer pruning to, to get rid of that. 
but to prevent it from happening, you do need to use the fungicide at the right time. And really, with peach tree coral, only one application is all that's required. You can, you can either do it in the fall after leaf has dropped okay. off that tree right. and do a really, really, really good job of spraying the bark, making sure you spray the bark and twigs and get very, very good coverage. Okay. Or you can do it in the early spring before bud break. And uh, you're probably going to have a better opportunity in the fall yeah, after the leaves finish. drop of, of getting the weather conditions that will allow mm -hmm. you to have that fungicide stay on there and not get washed off. Right, that's And you key. will in the yeah. springtime, okay. you know, right before yeah. bud break, because you spray it and then it washes it off. Right, and well, right. did, did I kill the did I kill the fungi? You know, and and, and but if, once you once point. you kill yeah. it, you know, uh, it, it won't be a problem. Right. But, uh, and, and you know, there are a lot of fungicides that yeah. will do the trick, the chlorothalonil, mm -hmm. Zyram, mm -hmm. Furbam, Fixed Copper, uh, Bordeaux, you know, yeah. there's a lot of fungicides that will, will do the trick, but uh, that will be the only way that we'll, you will not have that problem in the future. Okay, but, but, yeah. but once you've got a, most diseases, once you've got that disease, it stays there and you, your best hope is to prevent it from spreading. Your best hope is to prevent it from ever occurring. And right. that's why right. we go with preventative fungicide that's applications. Right. And that's why, you know, that's why we go, we use cover sprays on, on our fruits. And, and, and that's why cover sprays on pecans and, right. and, 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 and then on roses and whatever, you know, whatever. Right. You, right. You, it's timing, yeah, doing, putting the right product out there at the right time. And those yeah. preventative fungicides, again, could be the ones you just listed for us, right? The right. copper is right. and chlorodynil. Okay. Right. Just check the label. Check the label. The disease right. will be on the label right. of, the, of the fungicide that's out there. I bought a peach tree online, and it quickly started to get purple-colored <coughs> spots on the leaves and stem. Now it has worsened, and almost every leaf has it, and they have yellow edges as well. Please help me save my peach. And this is Dua from Sicklerville, New Jersey. All right. Mm, so yeah. can we help her, Dr. Kelly? Yeah, I think okay. we can tell her what the problem is, but it's really hard to control the disease called bacterial spot. Oh, yes, it is. A, a homeowner situation. Yes, it is. If she's a big orchard grower. You know, there's chemicals and things. But right. it's hard, but we think it's bacterial spot from the pictures and the description because mm -hmm. it'll have a little shot hole where the, exactly. the tissue would die out and there'll be little holes through the leaves. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we saw that on we the leaves. We definitely saw that and those yeah. leaves, of course, look tattered and torn. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you can get, not to say that you couldn't probably save that one, but what you can do is to maybe prune it out, open it up uh, a little bit so that it will dry yeah. quickly when you have wet weather because it is a bacterial uh, infection. And uh, you can use resistant varieties yeah. if this one does pass on to glory. Yeah. The other, there's some cultivars that are resistant to bacterial spot when I did a little research. And okay. one of them is the Bell of Georgia, which yeah. is an old, yeah. old variety, yeah. and South Haven and Red Haven. Yeah, no both of those. And those are just a few. Right. But uh, <clears throat> remove debris, the leaves yeah, when they fall, get rid mm -hmm. of all of that mm -hmm. because, you know, you've got the spores of the bacterium That's in right. that. So It is tough. Yeah, yeah. It, it's hard. Yeah. Really tough. Resistant varieties. Yeah, pruning. Maybe, maybe if you can get rid of all of it this winter, and put fresh mulch, prune it out, you know, while it's dormant. Yeah, good air circulation. And maybe, you know, it won't be so bad next year. Right. Yeah. And I would say, uh, do it. Go to your local extension office. They probably have a publication. They, probably, they do. That's probably a spray guide. Yep. You know, because I can I can hear Mr. D in my head uh -huh. saying peaches, plums, and nectarines need to be on a spray schedule. They do. They right. definitely do because uh, they are so prone to disease and insects in, in the mid south. They definitely are. So do a, yeah, go to your local extension office there and get that spray guide that'll help you out. Now I think you can get a, a dormant spray of some kind of copper. You can. And you can. spray that right. as can. a homeowner. You could do that. You can definitely do that during the dormant season, yeah, and that can. will help. Right. You know, with maybe it coming back out in the spring, right. looking so, a little yeah. better, maybe. Right. So a copper-based fungicide. Yeah. You can definitely do. Just read and follow the label on that. Right. Of course. And I think you'll be just fine. <coughs> yeah, picking up that spray guard. Yeah, yeah that'll, that'll help. help. Yeah. That'll help a great deal. That's for sure. 
My eight-year-old peach tree has been having problems the last few years. Blossoms and leaves are only on the top third of the tree. I get very little fruit too. I do get new shoots from the bottom half each year, but not until later in the year. Why does only the top third of my peach tree get leaves and blossoms? Thanks, and this is RBM Cobra on YouTube. So what do we think about that one? Hmm. Dude, yeah, just a top I have a couple, third. couple of questions. Yeah. Uh, you know, It'd be nice to have a picture of that one too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wonder how. Uh, I wonder what variety uh, the peach yeah, tree is. Yeah. I wonder yeah. where RBM lives. Yeah, okay. um, that's fair. Uh, I do know that peaches aren't as long lived as as some of the other fruits that are out there. Pears and apple trees will last longer. An eight-year-old peach tree is not an old peach tree, mm -hmm. but it sounds like you've been having problems for the last few years. So, so maybe three or four years you've been having problems. Uh, there is a phenomena in the peach business called peach tree short life, <laughs> and it's got there's like that. ten or twelve different things, or maybe even more now, that can be a problem, and it it ranges from from you know the wrong soil pH, the wrong variety in the wrong place, chill hours not quite being right. Okay. You know, needing a few more chill hours or or, or uh, getting a few you know a few too many uh, chill hours and 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 uh, there's a phony peach disease uh, which spends that. part yeah. of its life yeah. cycle as a plum tree, its plum leaf scald. If you got plum trees around, right. and 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 uh, uh, there's just a several things yeah. that all go into peach tree short life, and it sounds like that may be what you have here, and it's not just one thing, but it sounds like you only have one peach tree, which mm -hmm. is uh, they're self-pollinating, self so it doesn't right. doesn't require mm -hmm. two, but. Uh, if you started having problems, you know, at four years, three or four years, that give, gives me an idea that the peach tree is not where it needs to be. That it's, mm. it, the chill hours may not be quite right. Okay. Uh, that's that's my guess. Um, and without a picture, you know, it's yeah. really kind of hard to tell because you know, maybe look at the trunk. You know, do we see any frass? Could there be? Yeah, the if there's bores bore? in it, if there's bores yeah. in it, it's dying. Yeah. And it's dead. It doesn't know it's dead yet. You know. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, you know. I'm wondering about white peach scale. Okay. You right. know. Right. Uh, that could be on, you know, certain parts of the tree, right. and, and where it is, you won't have any foliage. But it's just I've not seen one that uh, blossoms and leaves are only on the top third yeah, of top the tree. Third. Yeah. The top third. That's just, uh, you yeah. know, that just sounds like something. I don't know whether uh, can deer reach the top, the bottom two thirds. <laughs> right. You know, if you got a bunch of deer, are they are they eating yeah. off? Do you, do you have a? It's called a browse line yeah. in nature. Right. When you look out and, yeah, and everything is yeah. wide open up to two or three feet, you know, right. off the ground, where as far as the deer can reach, you know, that. I mean, uh, do you have the, that? Our deer problem out there, but. Uh, yeah, it seems like we have more. Yeah, we have more questions. Yeah, so it'd be good to you know get a picture just so we could take yeah. note. It's that. Sounds like she do, does get some blossoms, yeah. and uh, I guess that tells me that they get some fruit. Yeah. But, uh, but something's not right there. Okay. Uh, I would, uh, I'd probably start with a soil test, mm -hmm. make sure your pH is right, mm -hmm. and and but but I'm I just have a feeling that that tree sounds like it's not where it's right. supposed to be. So we put out a new orchard in 2018. We have peaches, apples, and an heirs pear that I'd hope would be cross-pollinated by an old pear on the property. The new pear tree has never even blossomed. I asked the nursery where we purchased the trees about why that might be. I was instructed to be sure to prune the tree in early spring to force the blooms, but so far we have no blooms. Why is my pear tree not blooming? What can I do to make it bloom? And this is Sandra. So this is a interesting question. We talked about this a little earlier. Yeah, hmm. very interesting. Yeah. And, and there, there's several things. You know, I'm not sure where Sandra lives. Right. I'm not sure what zone she's in. I do know that the heirs 
repair requires uh, only 300 yeah. chill hours. So it's uh, very, very low chill hour period. You know, free to, it, it does very good in the southern United States, extreme southern United right. States. And what do we mean by chill hours, just in case somebody... Chill hours are the number of hours uh, below 45 degrees that uh, a lot of fruits have to have. They have a set number of chill hours they have to have. I mean, peaches are from 300, 250 to 1,000, 1,200 chill hours. So you, you, you need to make sure that when you plant any fruit that, that you check the chill hour yeah. requirements and, and match them to the zone that you live in. All right. Good point. And uh, that is that's very, very important with, with, with fruits especially. Uh, now another thing on, on pears, um, and I've got I've got a couple of pears in my yard. I actually have one as well. And I have one that mm -hmm. fruits very good, and I have one that doesn't fruit well at all. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, uh, they're 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 a little different. They do not require very much fertilizer. Mm -hmm. A rule of thumb yep. on fertilizer for for pear trees is three quarters of a pound. Now this is. From my old days at Auburn, three quarters of a pound of triple eight per tree per year of age, up to a maximum of seven pounds right. for an older tree. You right. never give more yes. than seven pounds of triple eight, which is not very much yeah, fertilizer yeah. for, for an old tree, but three quarters of a pound of triple eight per tree per year of age. So, uh, if your pear tree is in your yard and you fertilize your yard, or if you're fertilizing your pear tree the same way you're fertilizing uh, your apple trees, okay. your peach trees, and other trees, you're giving it too much fertilizer. Okay. And I so it's going, going right. vegetative right. instead of reproductive. Okay. And uh, um, that could be a problem with pears. Okay. So you treat pears a little different. Um, what, what about pollination? Uh, do, do they they do okay. require cross-pollination, mm -hmm. but if it's not, a bloom's not showing yeah. up, yeah. You know, pollination's not going on, but That's they right. do require cross-pollination, and you need to have a pear tree that blooms at the same time that, that this one is blooming. Yep. And, uh, but they're saying there are yeah, no this, blossoms this never, showing up, yeah. no blossoms, yeah, and so blooms. that's why, I, you know, I didn't, you know, that's, yeah. but they, they, they do require cross-pollination, and that is probably part of the problem with the pear that I have. It, I have two pears, one of them, gets pollinated probably not by the pear that's not <laughs> right. blooming and I don't think it's got one blooming around within insect honeybee mm. flight distance that is probably blooming at the same time it blooms but uh, but that's very important right sure. also mm -hmm. sure uh, but yeah but the fertilizing yeah that's, that's uh, yeah I didn't think about that uh, yeah. But that's yeah. that's really the only thing I can think of. Uh, I, would, I would make sure you're not over fertilizing. I mean, you're fertilizing your yard heavy. You got a pretty yard around that pear tree, then that tells me that you know that could be part of your yeah, problem. Yeah, fertilizer. Uh, mm -hmm. Another thing would be, uh, you know, I doubt that it's it's uh, that if you planted this tree up north, mm -hmm. it would it would break down. And when it got its 300 chill hours, the first warm spell it had, if it's in January, it's going to break dormancy and, and it's going to Which happens. It, it's right. going to, and, and then it's going to, it's probably going to get, get killed. Right. Because if it's, you know, breaks dormancy and then the temperature drops to 20 degrees or 10 degrees, you know, it's probably not going to survive up north. Yeah. So uh, probably in a zone where uh, the air should should work. But even even a 300 hour, hour uh pair up here in Tennessee, this far north, which is on the northern edge of where that mm. uh, zone is, could create a problem with years like we had this past yes. year. I mean, how many yes. ornamentals have we seen? Yeah. How much freeze damage have we seen after last, that late, that late yes. freeze that we had? Devastating. It has been mm -hmm. very devastating. So, I, you know, I don't know. And now, another thing I don't know about this, how old, okay, well, the, the tree is five yeah, years old. Yeah, it's five old. years old. Yeah. Tree's yeah. five years old, okay. I don't know how old a heir's pear is when it starts blooming. Ah, okay. So it may need to be six or seven years old. Right. You know, I know there's some pecans that, that they've got to have several years on them before they start, you know, okay. blooming and you know, producing fruit. I bought a persimmon tree about three years ago. The next year I got fruit. It's the one that looks like an apple. During the winter, it froze to the stump. The next year, small branches shot up and made about eight fruits, but they all fell off. 
This year I covered it during the frost. My persimmon branches have lots of flowers and small fruits, but they are beginning to fall off. What should I do? This is Jean from Ocala, Florida. Ah, ah from Florida, growing persimmon. How about that? So what do you think about that? It's, it's an interesting question. Yeah. yeah. Well, it actually froze to the storm, but I'm just realizing yeah, it's Florida. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah how about that? that's pretty, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because we have some that live as perennial trees here, so that's interesting. Yeah, that, it is. That, yeah. that froze to the stump. Um, but it's got a lot of blooms and fruit that's falling off. It's falling off. It, you know, it could be that at several things, but one thing comes to mind is if it's got that many flowers and fruit on it, the tree might not be able to, you know, finish off, you know, going to ripening all of that fruit, and it might be just self pruning itself because uh, it, be. it can't support all of that. Right. That's one thing that comes to mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is maybe it's, I mean, what kind of, why, I, I'm curious as why it would have died to the ground. Is it an area that doesn't like too much? Like, is it too wet or is it too dry? I mean, what, why, why is, it, is there a stump there? Because like I said, most persimmons are trees and they, they live. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why it died. So you have more questions. I have more questions. <laughs> for Ms. Jean. It could be the environment that it's in. Yeah, so it could be environmental factors. And, you, you know, of course, my, you know, my mind goes immediately to, it, was it fertilized? Could it, be, could it be too much nitrogen fertilizer? Oh, that's or true. Or could it be, you know, too wet, mm -hmm. right? Because, uh, yeah, the persimmon, what, maybe three years old? Yeah, it's uh, not very old. Maybe it needs to, you know, use all of its energy to develop the root system, you know, instead true. of trying to ripen in the fruit. True. Uh, so I'm just thinking about environmental factors. Yeah. yeah. And I wouldn't let all of those, uh, if it's coming up from the stump, I wouldn't let every single one of those mm -hmm. uh, uh, stalks stay. I right. would pick a few because, you know, it's going to get bigger. Right. Each one right. of them is going to get bigger, and you don't want them to grow together, and you want the, the fruits to produce larger fruits. Right. So I would pick three and keep the best three that hopefully are evenly spaced around the stump so that that it uh, has room to grow. Right, right. But yeah, just more questions. Yeah. I but questions. I mean, those are the things that come to my mind anytime yeah. I hear about fruit trees uh, dropping, you know, their fruit. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, so Ms. Jean, thank you much. And maybe a picture, you know. I yeah, would love picture, to have seen a picture, picture of that Picture, and, yeah. and maybe she can contact her local horti uh, agriculture extension sure, service sure. and they could come out and help her. Sure, yeah. They do a good job there at Florida Extension, so that would be a good recommendation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, contact your local extension agent, Ms. Jean, see if they can uh, come out and help you out with that. I have mango and naysberry trees that have black soot on the leaves. How do I get rid of the black coating? I tried soapy water with all the natural ingredients without success. I would appreciate any assistance. And this is Grace from Central Florida. Mm. So, can you provide Grace with some assistance, Celeste? So this is kind of going back to what we talked about <laughs> at the beginning of right. the episode with the, the black city mold right. forming on that honeydew. Um, and so probably aphids or some other yeah. soft-bodied insect, mm -hmm. right, that is feeding with that piercing, sucking type mouth parts and creating that uh, black city mold. So, um, you know, they've tried uh, soap, which was right. a good first attempt, mm -hmm. right? Because it is an insect that is causing this. Um, you know, most people probably would go first to thinking that it was a fungal, you sure. know, issue or something like yeah. that. So that was a good first attempt. Um, but those soft-bodied insects can be so hard to control sometimes. Yes. Yes. And so um, bumping up to some other types of products that are going to be a little more broad spectrum is uh, probably going to be the way to go um, to help with getting those insects controlled. And then also I would caution them to be aware after they do that first application to come back seven to ten laters and seven to ten days later mm -hmm. and do it again. Um, because oftentimes those pests will have, uh, it'll control the adult forms, but maybe it doesn't right. control the egg form. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, seven to 10 days later, you've got a whole new crop That's of right. adults. So um, folks can be using a product and think it's ineffective, but maybe they just didn't use it 
often enough for it to be effective. So I see a couple different avenues for them to go there. They could stick with the soap if they want to, you know, do um, least impact type mm -hmm. type kind of things uh, with sequential applications. Then bump it up to maybe some oils, horticultural yeah. oils would be maybe the next, and then possibly look at um, some permethrin type products. All right. Yeah. yeah, read and follow the label, repeat application, folks. It's definitely yeah. going to be that mm. for sure. One thing I would say is sometimes we'll see recipes for, mm. you know, like I would suggest that it be an insecticidal I soap. Would. Right, mm. right. You know, rather than something that's Dish formulated. Soap. Right, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And I know, that's, I know that's what you were thinking. Yeah. I just wanted yeah. to throw that in there. No, no, that's sometimes good. there's some homemade recipes. Yes. Yeah, that's that a lot of homemade recipes. Provide yeah. the efficacy that we would hope. Good clarification. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. We don't want to be going out there and like spraying bubbles of joy. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we definitely don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference between detergents and soaps. Mm -hmm. Right. So you definitely want to be careful. Uh, but yeah, can you get rid of the black city mold coating though? Because that's usually a question we get. Um, you know, I know Mother Nature kind of has to help you out with that. So weather uh, it off. Yeah, it'll, well, it'll naturally get weathered off, you yeah. know, eventually if the plant is an outside plant. Now, if, if we're talking about house plants, yeah. you might need to help that along. Yeah, you with, probably need to clean it. Yeah. I think that depends a lot on the size of yeah. the plant and yeah. their location. And okay. Even and maybe they have this mango. I don't know. Maybe it's in a greenhouse. Then it, they, it would need some cleaning to try to help get that off. And so the leaves can do photosynthesis. If they're all covered up with black city mold, they're not going to be as efficient. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org. And the mailing address is Family Plot 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for sending in the questions. Hopefully we gave you some good information that can help you this spring. To learn more about anything we talked about today, go to familyplotgarden.com. At the site, we have lots of information about growing fruit and how to take care of common problems. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe.